Hi, this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali. In this video tutorial, we will learn one awesome concept regarding creating a dynamic and modern Excel dashboards using dynamic array formula that will be grouped by with a combination of lambda, biro, and we will be connecting the slicers with group by function in this Excel 365 version. That will be very useful if you are creating Excel dashboards with the latest version and that should be uh, dynamic and modern. So let's get start. All right, so we will be using the group by function here and we will be picking the columns from the data that will be a salesperson column to be grouped by and also the revenue based on the revenue. But before doing it, we will select the entire data and we will convert this into a table format. So for doing that, we can use either a shortcut key control T or we can go to insert, click on table and click OK. All right. So this range has been converted into a table format uh, that is technically into a structured reference and we will give a nice name to this table. So the default name is either table one or table two. So we will rename this as data. Okay. All right. So after doing this, we will go to the dashboard sheet and we will apply the logic. So I mean, it depends on your requirement uh, based on either you can use group by function or you can also apply this logic on the pivot by function as well. Okay. So in this particular video, we will be using the group by function. The first argument of the group by function is the raw fields. So here we will be picking the data table and we will say salesperson. The second argument is the values. So we have to go to again data table and we will select the revenue. Then the function we want is the sum, right? If you want the field headers, you can either use one, two or three. I mean, depends on your requirement. The default is zero. If you want the totals, grand totals or subtotals in a different location you can use one two minus one minus two if you don't want any totals you can use zero or you can skip uh, the default is zero okay so let's have a grand total as well and then close the bracket okay and let's see the results so we have here salesperson okay let's have a heading salespersons and the revenue Okay, and we have the total is 438636. That's the total. Now, what, what we need is we need to insert a slicer and we need to connect with this particular function that is group by. Okay, so let's see if it happens and if it does not happen. So what is the best way to do that to make it dynamic and to use that in modern Excel dashboards? So to add the slicer what you can do is you can go to the database and there are two ways to do it the first way is you can go to the insert tab and you can find the slicer here in the filters group or you can go to the table design tab and you can insert a slicer within the tools group as well okay so let's click on insert slicer and let's add uh, a field called category okay and let's click ok so here we have let's cut this object control x and let's paste this here on the dashboard sheet so control v right now what i want is to make this particular function of group by in such a way that when i click on any of the category it should be update it should be filter but here you can see when I click any of the field inside the slicer of category, uh, the numbers are not changing here. So definitely we need to create a logic here. Okay. And what kind of a logic we want to create that will be based on 
nesting some functions like uh, lambda and by raw and the subtotal as well but before doing that let me give you what i am trying to do here so let's say if i take you to the data and uh, i want i have just added a slicer of this category column right so what the logic i will be creating here is that let's say if i select the baked goods and mixes in the category slicer when i click on this baked goods and mixes what happens i will create a column here and that will generate either a zero or one which means false or true okay so when i select baked goods and mixes okay let's say uh, when we go to the first record this the categories beverages so that is not the baked good goods and mixes so here the output will be zero again zero 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 until and unless i get my uh, baked cook goods and mixes right so that will be technically one one here then again zero 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 right something like that so how to do that how to create this kind of technique here okay and let's say i mean for example if i write it again for you i go to my dashboard and if i select dried fruits and nuts in the slicer okay so what that column will represent whatever i select on the slicer that will technically generate one here okay like this so for doing all right so we are here and let me remove this close bracket now again i will left this field so the magic here is this particular argument in the group by function that is filter array so let's start by raw so we will going raw by raw because we need to generate either zero or one so we need to go raw by raw so we will be selecting the data table and we need to select a column that in that reference one is r and let's close the brackets okay and enter so now let's see if it happens so baked goods and mixes so you can see all those salesperson and their revenues according to one item is being filtered candy uh, dairy products dried fruits and nuts right beverages so see how easy it was uh, but what if if I want to add one more slicer so I need to uh, redefine my logic I mean the answer is no I mean that's very simple you can go to your database and uh, go to table design let's insert a slicer for example for the region okay. let me delete this logic column that's of no use, no use. <clears throat> so control X Let's go to the dashboard sheet, press control V and let's make it by two columns. So let's resize this. Now see what happens when I click on, uh, let's say dairy products. So we have uh, data in North and West. So if I want to still drill down so I can click on North and see only Ahmed Ali is there. Okay. When I click on West, so you can see Mohammad Raza is there. Similarly, fruits and vegetables. Just we have the West beverages. Uh, in the West, we have Salim and Salman. When I click on South, it's Kamran. So it's it's dynamic. And if you compare this particular awesome technique, um, for example, if you are not using Excel three six five version for creating such kind of a things, so. I can compare with the traditional approach in the traditional Excel uh, or in the older versions when we have this kind of a data sets we have to create multiple pivot tables and users does that in order to have different kind of visualizations and then combining all together with slicers and, and, and the layout and colors and formatting things but what happens when you have the large data sets and when you create multiple pivots 
it basically increases the file size slow down your excel uh, workbooks uh, that without creating a pivot and increasing the file size your work gets very much better and easier and eventually let me show you one example so see this is the data that is dynamic now and connected with the slicer so if i go to the insert and when i insert a chart to it okay let's say we don't need the total so what i will do i will write zero here all right and uh, i can place the chart somewhere here okay all right and when i click on any of the category you can see your chart is being updated your data is being updated and filtered right this is awesome this this is where we want our users to learn uh, the modern dashboard concepts uh, for their organizations okay another thing which i would like to include in this video is that whenever i select any category i want that name in the header or the title of the chart as well it should be dynamic so for that let's create a logic okay now let's learn how to create a dynamic chart title okay so for that we will create a logic here let me write that for you that will again uh, uh, nesting of different functions such as unique filter subtotal uh, raw minimum okay so let me tell you how to do it so we'll write starting with unique and then we will apply the filter function and we will call the data table and we want have category that is our main slicer then subtotal one of subtotal 103 okay uh, why 103 because just three will uh, definitely use for count a that will include the hidden rows we just need to get all those unique values uh, which we will be selecting here in the filter uh, which we will be selecting here in the slicer uh, that will give a value of the visible cells only okay so we add the offset function as well so we'll select the data table again category column raw data table category column okay, close the bracket minus minimum raw if you have any other idea to do this kind of a thing i would be welcome you can uh, write the solution if you are watching this video on my youtube channel linkedin or facebook all right so data category that is the slicer let's close the bracket and complete and close the brackets all right so see when i click on baked goods and mixes it just give me this particular item when I click on beverages here it gives beverages but what happens when I click on more than one um, item in the slicer so let's hold the control key and now I have selected the beverages and dairy products and let's say dried fruits and nuts so three items so I will be adding another function that will be text join So I will be adding another function that is text join. So the delimiter is comma space, ignore empty cells and then close the bracket. So that now in just one cell and let me 
at the, at the start so we will say that revenue based on category and m person and that's that's it so now what we will do we'll click on this title on the chart we'll go to the formula bar press the equal sign and then click on the cell so now you can see when i click on any one item in the category slicer you can see that is being updated here and my uh, the title of the chart is now dynamic as well okay revenue based on category dairy products dried fruits and eventually you can do some formatting here as well for the charts let's add the data labels and whatever the color combinations you would like to have okay so now you can see the power of uh, dynamic array functions and their logics and how to connect slicers with the group by function as well so i hope you like this technique and do practice and do share it with your colleagues thank you okay so one more thought which i would like to add in this video is that how would be the modern excel user at present and in future will be using excel for the dashboards now as we know that we have the bi tools available and the microsoft ecosystem has a power bi uh, tool available that is could be the desktop version that could be the uh, a service account or it could be a report server so what the professionals do in the organization they connect with the uh, api uh, either it could be a, a local hard drive with some excel files or they can connect with sql server or sap but they needs to be uh, make sure that they use uh, not just the traditional approach of uh, creating excel dashboards but to focus on uh, dynamic array formulas number one number two now we know that the python is being also available uh, for the analysis the power query is there so for for instance um, if we have a sql server connection and we uh, needs to connect we have a large data sets for example 10 million of uh, rows of data okay and we will not load that big data into our spreadsheet because i mean technically that will takes a lot of time to updates and refresh the calculations and eventually that will slow down or crash your excel workbooks so what we can do we can use power query to make a connection with sql server to bring the data in terms of either merging of two tables or appending the data and we can uh, switch or and then we can push that data into the power pivot uh, and for using dax there okay so i can add power pivot as well and eventually uh, what we can do is we can analyze data python so we might we might be having a data on cloud and we just want to connect with that so i mean technically if you will be working with some some big data and you still want to make modern excel dashboards not with the traditional approaches uh, you need to learn all these things that's my just point of view that what i'm observing at this point of time uh, so whatever the courses you approach either free of cost or paid from any trainer do look at these kind of things are available in their training programs that will leverage you to uh, work with good organizations uh, if you're looking these kind of opportunities as a jobs or if you are a freelancer i mean you can see a significant importance of these kind of things as well thank you